It's time for pop off politics. The city of Houston took last week off to get kiddos ready for school, but they're back in the office this week. Also back with us this Tuesday our Mario Diaz, who's bringing us up to speed with what the city is planning to do with your your hard earned money. That's right. Good morning. Good morning to you and you nailed it, Zach. City Council members basically said adios. Bye bye. Yeah, we're gone for the week. That's what they do. They do this every once in a while. It's one of the rare weeks during the actual year when they do this no council city mm -hmm, meeting thing. Mm -hmm. All right, no city council meeting thing. So since they had a break last week, business from last week becomes business for this week. Business for this week. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? Though? Oh, I do. That's okay, a got little, it. Uh, we're going to talk about that in a second. Yes, right? <laughs> yeah, we are. Favorite term. <laughs> At city council. Okay, what are we talking about this week? 67 items on the agenda. Busy. Okay, 67 items. So which one better to start with than number 67? And this deals with the protesting in front of elected officials homes. It's an item that got tagged, tagged, which yeah, means kick down the road two weeks. So here it is, right? Boom, 67 ordinance adding new section to chapter 28. Uh, the code of ordinance related to targeting of residential picketing, okay? Um, amending section 30-9 for consistency with the new section declaring certain conduct to be unlawful and providing a penalty. Therefore, do we have the rest? I think, do we have the rest of the graphic? Uh, therefore, that's the graphic. It's a two-parter, right? All right, okay, and this basically, it, it, this is stuff that's dealing with the protesters. Oh, the two-parter is coming up. Yeah, yeah. I think we got a little ahead of ourselves. Uh, so we, we were did. talking about tagging. You know, this is what happens when you take a week off. <laughs> Everything gets rusty. It's like riding a bike, right? Every, you you take a week off, and you're just rusty. <laughs> the, you can't uh, move the thumb. It just, that's it. Anyway. All right, so this has to do, let me just break it down. Let me do the ad lib. Yes, this is, uh, yes. Let me go off the dome. Yes. Okay, here we go. Off so this has to do with the fact that there's been some picketing in front of the mayor's home. And there's been a concern here. But this isn't just about the mayor's situation, yeah. right? This is about what the mayor said two weeks ago to city council. He said, hey, listen, there's other elected officials that have expressed their concerns to me. You have Ted Cruz. Mm. You have mm -hmm. Congress, U.S. Senator, by the way. You have Congresswoman Lizzie Fletcher. Both sides of the aisle. Yeah, and they're expressing their concerns because they have had protesters just show up right to their front door, come right here this close, and just block things and start protesting. Yeah. Mayor said, we can't have that. Yeah. Is it, is it a safety concern? It is a security concern. Yeah. It's a neighborhood concern. Yeah, yeah. But protesting is the American way. Right, true. Right? First Amendment. It's American. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to protest, that's what you're doing. Absolutely. You go in front of someone's house, it's allowed. But in this case, what they want to do is create a buffer. Okay, a boundary. There you go, that's a good term for it. 200 feet. 200 feet. So, Zach, you, can, you can't stand in front of my house. No, this is my house, you can't do that. Right. But hey, Zach. 200 feet. All right, say something bad about me yeah. now. Right. You can say something bad about me that far apart. That's what they're allowing with this ordinance. It was tagged by four members, oh, wow. Tiffany Thomas, Tarsha Jackson, Ed Pollard, Letitia Plummer. They had issues with it. So we'll see what is going to happen now with this because there was a big fight and um, tomorrow's the vote. Mm -hmm. And it again is going to change the way protesting is done here in the city of Houston. Hey, I got us caught up. Look at that. Look at that. Okay, so coming up next, uh, because we have some new chiefs, let's talk about what this looks like and these announcements. This and we're is the talking about new, right? new chiefs. This is the two-parter. Yeah, this is the new part. Okay, we're gonna here we go. We're gonna begin with agenda item number three. <laughs> Boom, right there. It's a request for mayor confirmation of the appointment of Orlando Thomas Munoz as fire chief of the Houston Police Department. I mean, me, fire chief of the Houston Fire Department, forgive me. Right. <laughs> okay, this is where the next one is. Requests uh, from mayor for confirmation of the appointment of Jose Noe, Noe Diaz. Do we have the next one up? There, there it is. is. For the chief of the Houston, Houston Police, Police Department. Department. I got ahead of myself again, sorry about that. Uh, Significant changes. Major changes. Yes, because we're talking about leadership that deals with public safety. Remember, it's the cornerstone, mm -hmm. right? It is the signature, signature event or initiative of John Whitmire's campaign, his mission at City Hall. Um, but how we got here, Zach, with both these men gentlemen mm -hmm. is unique yeah because both were tied up with scandals that uh, well if you remember not these two gentlemen right we're talking about the right. previous chiefs, right 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 uh former houston fire chief sam Pena. will he back the previous mayor sylvester turner in that notorious union, union fight? fight yeah for Ooh. years so you know and then after six months of working with mayor whitmire the mayor himself wanted a change citing the lack of preparations mm -hmm. 
for what we saw during with fire stations during Hurricane Barrel last month. So he said it was time to make a move there. OK, and remember, I was the one that actually broke the news to Chief Pena. Yeah, I called him up because we had gotten the I call him chief. Is this going on? What's he goes, going on? Hey, it's news yeah. to me, Mario. Yeah. It's news to me. It's kind of strange, but then the Houston Police Department. Remember the former chief? Yes, we had Troy Finner. Troy Finner. Yeah. OK, so he was forced to retire after several key elements that KPRC 2 investigates exposed during the, you know, the mm -hmm. whole situation with Suspensions. the suspended. Yep. Of the sex the assault cases. investigations along with hundreds of thousands. Yeah, about 264,000. Exactly. And you're talking about cases of criminal cases being suspended because they didn't have enough personnel. So let's just suspend them. Manpower. Let's not even worry about them. Yeah. We're talking about 4,400 sex assault cases, okay? And if you think about this, Zach, this investigation is still ongoing. Yeah, I was going to ask what the latest is with this. Yeah, it's still ongoing. Wow. You still have an ongoing investigation. Um, I spoke with leadership about this, at least at the beginning of the month. So, you know, obviously, the chief here, Noe Diaz, has to mm -hmm. finish this mm -hmm. thing as it goes through. You have yeah. the mayor's independent board, and you have three members of the department. The executive assistant chief, Chandra Hatcher, yeah. still trying to figure out what's going on with her. Then you have Wyatt Martin, an assistant chief, who he had an IED complaint. A lot of situations. Yep. A lot of situations. And, and, going, and, Crawford. and going back to the, you know, the suspended cases, you know, for, for many of us, they're just numbers, right? But for a lot of folks, they are survivors. They are victims attached to these cases waiting for answers. Not only that, yes, you're absolutely right. And people are frustrated because they didn't have law enforcement that we paid for, that take the oath to protect and serve. They weren't doing that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They didn't even come close to that. Yeah. And you look at these two big names, a significant date. This will be tomorrow for the administration of Mayor John Whitmire. Two good men. Yeah. Everything I've learned from these two men, they're very good men. Um, but significant because this is the cornerstone yeah. of Whitmire's administration's public safety. I don't ever recall a time in which two public figures, a police chief and a fire, fire chief, chief, were named on the same exact day of anywhere that I've researched. Fascinating. Holding them accountable, as always, MDS Mario Diaz.